In this video, you will get lessons from this number one bestseller book. I'm offering this lesson to you for free as part of my company's mission to help you reach your music dreams and have fun along the way. You will find the playlist with all videos from this course in the video description and comments. There may be information in previous videos that will make the video you are watching now easier to understand. I recommend watching the videos in order. Hi, I'm Dan Spencer, author of the best music theory book for beginners. Over 5,000 people have purchased this book, pushing it to hit number one bestseller in its category on Amazon. Finally, if you would like to get this number one book, the workbook for free, along with quizzes, interactive flashcards, and more bonuses, links are in the video description and in the comments. And now here is the next lesson and the best music theory course level one. Huge congratulations to you to making it to this final chapter, this final module in the theory one course. And of course, in the best music theory book for beginners. This is where the magic happens. Everything you've learned has led up to this because now you're going to take all your theory knowledge and you're going to use it to break down, to analyze, to understand music that you love. Now, just to let you know that the first pieces you are going to learn are going to be very easy children's songs because that's where we need to start. But once you have those under your belt, you are set to go to analyze any level one lead sheet that you want to. And you'll also be able to take that knowledge and bring it outside of Best Music Coach into other music that you want to understand and the music that you love. So let's talk about a lead sheet. What is a lead sheet? So lead sheets show melody in notation using notes, you know, with note heads and stems and rests and dots, all that good stuff, ties, repeat signs. And then there's chord symbols above the staff that show what chord is happening while the melody plays. So there's three parts of a lead sheet. There's chords, melody, and then there's also lyrics, which are the words to songs. Not all songs have words, so you, not all lead sheets have lyrics, but you will see many lead sheets with lyrics for the words to different songs. So let's start by talking about the chord. So the chord symbol is always going to be written above the staff. Sometimes there's a new chord every measure or every other measure, and sometimes there's only one chord for every line of music, and sometimes there's going to be one chord for an entire page of music. If we look at the example on this page here, you can see that in the second measure, there is no chord symbol. So we have a chord symbol here in the first measure. That's our G, but you can see in the second measure, where's the chord symbol? There is no chord symbol, but that's okay. Because the way chords work in lead sheets is whenever we have a chord written above a measure, that chord is going to last until we get to the next chord. So even though there's no chord symbol written here, we know there's a chord symbol over here. And that chord symbol is going to apply to every single measure that comes after it until we get another chord symbol. So the reason there is no chord symbol in measure two is because the G chord over measure one right here will apply to every measure that comes after it until a different chord symbol is written. So chord symbols also apply to measures that have rests in them. And this is because the measures with rests are showing a rest in the melody or in the notation, but not a rest in the chord. So you can see that this measure right here there's a whole rest and there's a C chord over it. And even over here, there's a half rest and a quarter rest still with a C chord over it. All of that is okay. Those are two separate things. The rest is for the melody or the single notes, but the chord continues on even though there is a rest in the melody. So let's take a look at the second part of lead sheets, and that is the melody. So the melody is the notes on the staff. And you can also see that we have a measure here with no notes in it, but there is a chord symbol over it, and that's because the D chord would still apply to this measure here, even though there are no notes. We can see the melody, it goes along like this, 
Very nice melody there with chord symbols above. Now the last thing for us to talk about are the lyrics. We can see that the lyrics for this song are this is a lean sheet song. And those are fine words. Perhaps the songs you know have more exciting words than that, but that's okay. This is just an example for you to understand that whenever you're looking at a lean sheet, we have chords above, we have melody in the middle, and we have lyrics below, and not all lean sheets will have lyrics, so it's okay if you don't see lyrics. Some songs just don't have words to them, and they are instrumental, which means just instruments are playing, no voice or words are used. I will see you in the next lesson. In this lesson, you are going to understand the three steps that you are going to go through to determine and to figure out what key a song is in just by looking at the music without actually hearing the music at all. So this is pure music theory that you're going to be able to understand. So what we're going to do in this lesson, we're just going to break down the three steps and then in the next three lessons, we're going to spend one lesson on each one of the three steps and then we're going to do a bonus lesson at the end of those to tie it all together and to walk you through the thought process of figuring out what key a song is in. So as you may remember, every major and natural minor scale is related to a key, and a key is a summary of all the notes of the scale. You remember those buckets that we put all those notes into? So when you write or perform music with a key signature, you're going to be in that key. Now here's a little advantage, and it's going to make your life a little bit easier. It's still going to be challenging, but it's going to make it a little bit easier for you. All level one lead sheet songs only have two possible key signatures. You're only ever going to see the key for E minor or G major or C major and A minor. So there's two possible key signatures, two relative keys for each key signature, and that is, as we just talked about, C major or A minor, those are the relative keys, or the relative scales, and G major and E minor, the relative keys and also the relative scales. So let's talk about the formula you are going to use to figure out the key of most songs. Now keep in mind that this formula works for all keys. We're just going to start with these four to begin with because as you'll see, it can be a little challenging just with these four, but what I'm teaching you here works for all keys. So step number one is you're going to look at the key signature and you're going to figure out what possible keys the key signature could be. Step number two is you are going to look at the chords and there's going to be all sorts of tips and tricks you're going to learn in a couple of lessons for actually looking at different groups of chords and which chords are used where to understand what key the song might be in. The last thing you'll learn are common notes which are going to show you whether a song is in a certain key or maybe a different key, whether it's in the relative major or the relative minor. And when we put all those three pieces of information together, our possible key signatures, we're going to look at the chords, then we're going to look at the common notes, we're going to put all three of those pieces of information together, and when we look at a song from those three angles, then we're going to have a very high degree of confidence in saying the key of the song when we look at it from all three angles. I will see you in the next lesson where we're going to talk about the first angle, the possible key signatures. I'll see you there. The first step for you to figure out what key a song is in is to look at the key signature and then think about the two possible keys that are connected to that key signature. Because remember, there's relative major and relative minor keys that share the same key signature, but we're not going to be sure which is which until we look at the chords and the notes. So this is the first step. Whenever you sit down to try and analyze a piece of music, you want to look at the key signature and say to yourself, what are the two possible keys this song could be in? So each key signature works with both a major and natural minor scale. Remember the buckets where we could put all those notes in the buckets, and then it would show us the key signature. Now, the symbol 
for each key signature is actually going to be the same as the chord symbol for a triad. So major keys, our chord symbols are going to be C and G. For major keys, the symbols will be C and G. Notice we don't need to write anything on that. Just like with major triads, if we don't write anything besides a capital letter, we're assuming the quality of the chord is major. Same thing here. If we just see a C or a G, we're assuming the key is major. And then minor keys would be A minus sign and E minus sign. If we have that minus sign after a letter, we are for sure going to be in a minor key. If we have no accidentals in our key signature, you can see here there are no accidentals, none. The possible keys are either C major or A minor. That's that relative connection because if we look, there's no sharps or flats. So we have, sure enough, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then two legend lines up, C. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. There's no sharps or flats. This key signature is just telling us no sharps or flats. The possible keys, whenever you see this key signature, the first thing you're going to say to yourself is, okay, the key is either C major or A minor. If you see one sharp in the key signature, you're going to say to yourself, okay, the key is either G major or E minor. It's one or the other. It's never going to be C major or A minor when you have one sharp because there are no sharps or flats in the C major scale or the A natural minor scale. In summary, this is a critical first step. The first step you are always going to do is you look at the piece and you say to yourself, what are the two keys that this piece could be in? And one key is going to be major and the other is going to be the relative minor of that major key. I will see you in the next lesson. When we're trying to identify the key of a piece and we've looked at the key signature and figured out, okay, we have our one major key it might be, we have our relative minor of that major key that it might be, for example, C major and A minor. A second example would be G major and E minor. The second thing to do is to look at the chords of the piece of music. Now the chords are not always going to tell you whether a piece of music is in the major or the relative minor key, but there are some useful tips you can take from looking at the chords that will help you make the decision whether the key is actually major or minor. So chords can be less useful than melody, which we'll get to in the next lesson to confirm the key of a song, but with a little information, there are a few shortcuts that can help confirm whether a song is a major or minor key. So you're going to use common chord progressions to quickly identify if the chords show a major key. Basically, what we're trying to do with these common chord progressions is just get a very quick read and say, okay, can we quickly right now just say this is major? And if there aren't any common chords, then we're just going to look at all the chords and from there try and factor in the chords into our decision. So a chord progression is two or more chords played in a row. Many songs are built out of one or more chord progressions and the chords repeat throughout the song. So here's one common chord progression. That's the one, six, four, five. So one meaning C, six would be A minor, four would be F, five would be G. And we're thinking about that in terms of the harmonized major scale. So when we harmonize a C major scale, sure enough, on scale degree one, we get a C major. And because it's a chord, not a scale degree, we're going to show that with a Roman numeral. So we're going to show the quality of the chord with the uppercase Roman numeral, and then which scale degree it relates to with the number of the Roman numeral. A minor is minor, scale degree six. F major is major, so scale degree four. And G is major, so capital and scale degree five. Now we can also think about a one, six, four, five in the key of G major. So in the key of G major, one would be G, Six would be G, A, B, C, D, E minor. Four would be G, A, B, C major. And five would be G, A, B, C, D major. And you can listen to these three songs to get a good idea of what a one, six, four, or five, I Will Always Love You, written by Dolly Parton, Perfect by Ed Sheeran, and Baby by Justin Bieber.
If you ever see a one, six, four, five chord progression, it doesn't have to happen every single measure. It could happen every two measures. Like you could have a C for two measures, an A minor for two measures, an F for two measures, a G for two measures. What you're looking for is that pattern of one, six, four, five. And if you see that one, six, four, five, there's a strong possibility that the key of the song you're looking at is major. Here's another common chord progression. One, five, six, four, a little bit more of a modern sounding one. Now the one, five, six, four, it works in the same way. All we're talking about are triads taken from the harmonized major scale in different order. In the case of this one, five, six, four, we are showing this in the key of C major. So we have C, which is gonna be one. We're showing the triad quality with the Roman numeral. It's a capital Roman numeral. We're showing the scale degree with the number of the Roman numeral. That's a one. G, that's gonna be scale degree five, major. So it's a capital five, A minor, six, lowercase because it's a minor quality chord, six because scale degree six in the C major scale. And then F, well that's major, so it's uppercase, scale degree four in the C major scale. Now let's think about this same chord progression if it was in the key of G major. G would be one. Five would be G, A, B, C, D major. Six would be G, A, B, C, D, E minor. And four would be G, A, B, C major. So the useful thing about using these Roman numerals to talk about chord progressions is we don't actually need to say the actual chord name or talk about the chord symbol. We can just say in the key of G major, it's a one, five, six, four. And as soon as I say a one, five, six, four in G major, you can think, okay, one is G major, G, which is major. And then you think about five, major, minor, minor, major, major, and G, A, B, C, D, so D major. And then you can think about six as major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, whatever scale degree six is going to be, the quality is going to be minor. We go G, A, B, C, D, E, so E minor. And then four, major, minor, minor, major, G, A, B, C, C major. Three examples of this chord progression actually in real songs. The song Girls Like You by Maroon 5, Hey Soul Sister by Train, and So Lonely by The Police. Here's common chord progression three. Now there are more common chord progressions than just these three, but these are three good ones to remember. Now this common chord progression is very interesting because it does not start on one, it starts on six. So you would actually think, perhaps, that instead of it being six, four, one, five, it might be a one, six, three, seven. Think about it that way. Okay, so look. Is this common chord progression a six, four, one, five, or is it a one, six, three, seven? Does that make sense? Because, think about it this way, if we're in the key of C major, then sure, A minor scale degree six, F is scale degree four, G is scale degree five, C is scale degree one, but if we're in the key of A minor, we could think about A minor as being one, F is being six, C is being three, and G is being seven, and those are triads taken from the A natural minor scale, harmonized to the fifth. So what is interesting is that when you see this chord progression, you're going to treat it as major, not as minor, even though it might make sense to do so. This common chord progression, just like the other common chord progressions, works the same way. If we were to do this in the key of G major, we would have E minor would be six, C would be four, G would be one, D would be five. And that we, and we can tell that from the Roman numerals. Three examples of this common chord progression are A New Day Has Come by Celine Dion, Apologize by Timbaland, and Faded by Alan Walker. So I know this was kind of a long lesson, but hang with me here. We're going to do a summary of how to identify the key of a lead sheet when you use chords. So number one, you're going to identify the major and minor key associated with the key signature of the music. Number two, you're going to make sure that all the chords belong in the key of the key signature. 
all the chords in the song should come from the harmonized scale of the key. So for example, if you think you're in the key of C major and you see a D major chord instead of a D minor chord, that means there's an F sharp on that D major, you've probably taken a wrong step somewhere. Go back and look at your key signature. Now that being said, realistically in music out in the real world, you do get chords that are not from the same key in songs all the time but to start off with we're just going to hang out with songs where all the chords are in the key major keys usually start on one four or five minor progressions for minor keys usually start on scale degree one with the exception of this six four one five that's not one six three seven if the first and last chords of a song our major one or minor one of a key, it is likely that the song is in that key. So for example, if a song starts and ends on a G chord, it is likely in the key of G. If a song starts and ends on an E minor chord, it's likely in the key of E minor. If it starts and ends on a C major, it is likely in the key of C major. And if a song starts and ends with a chord of A minor, it is likely in the key of A minor. I will see you in the next lesson. In this lesson, you are going to understand what common notes are and how to use them for figuring out the key of a lead sheet or a song. So there's a few common notes that can point to if a song is probably in the major or the relative minor key. You're going to pay special attention to the notes that land on the strongest and strong beats, go back and review module two or chapter two if you need to now, of each measure since the strongest and strong beats are more important in our musical culture. So common notes in the first measures, not measure, but measures, you're gonna look at the first three, four, five measures. You're gonna look for scale degrees one, three, and five from the major scale in general, but especially landing on strongest and strong beats. And you look for scale degrees one, flat, three, and five from the natural minor scale, landing on strongest and strong beats. And the last couple of measures, not measure, but measures more than one, you're gonna look at the last couple measures. You're gonna look for scale degree one, three, five, six, and seven from the major scale, landing in general, but also especially on strongest and strong beats. And you're gonna also look for scale degrees one flat, three, and five from the natural minor scale, in general, but especially landing on strongest and strong beats. So to identify the key of a lead sheet using a melody, number one, you're going to identify the major and minor key that are connected with the key signature of the music. So is it C major and A minor, or is it G major and E minor? Number two, you're going to analyze the notes of the melody for the first few measures and in the last few measures of the song as if the key is major, and then also as if the key is minor. There's going to be two different ways you're going to look at the melody. You're going to play a game where you're going to pretend it's major, you're going to pretend it's minor, and then you and then you're gonna see which is the most likely case. Which is the most likely? Is it major or is it minor? Make sure you pay special attention to the notes that land on the strongest and strong beats. Three, if the notes in the first and last measures, not measure, but measures, and especially on the strongest and strong beats, include scale degree one of a scale, the song is usually in the key of that scale. So you're looking for more of either major or minor common notes in the first few and the last few measures. So let's go and play this game where we imagine it as a major key and then we imagine it as a minor key. We imagine the melody to be major, then we imagine the melody to be minor. So you can see up top, this is going to be a minor melody, but let's go through it anyway so you can understand. So first thing to do is to look at the key signature. Now the key signature has one sharp, which means it's either going to be G major or E minor. We're not sure which right now. Don't look where it says minor melody. <laughs> Don't look there. Look, we're gonna imagine, okay, we know there's two possible keys. It's either G major or E minor. Now we're gonna imagine the melody as if it's in E minor and in G major, and we're gonna see which way of imagining it comes up with more common notes, especially looking at strongest and strong beats. So let's imagine this from a major perspective. So we're not gonna worry about this for right now. We're just gonna worry about major. So we're putting our major hats on. We're gonna imagine this melody is major. 
So if we're imagining this melody is major, we're going to look at the first note, which is E is scale degree 6. And then the next note, F sharp, has 7, then 1. Okay, so in the first measure, we do have a scale degree 1 landing on a strong beat, landing on beat 3 because we are in 4-4. Four, four. And then, sure enough, in measure two on beat one, we do have a major common note. Remember, our common notes for major are one, three, and five. We do have a major common note. We have three landing on the strongest beat. Uh, and we also have five, and we also have three. So even though we don't have a common note landing on the strong beat, we still have three fives and threes. See, we have a three, we have a five, and a three, and these are all common notes for a major key, which means, oh yeah, them, it's a strong case for being in a major key. Then in measure three, we have scale degree two, scale degree seven, and then in the last measure, we have six, three, six, which are not very strong notes in terms of our common notes. So we only have one common note in the last measure, and that's three, and it's on a weak beat. So already right here, we can see that if you write out the scale degrees, thinking about this melody as being major, we end up with 6, 7, 1, 3, 5, 6, 3, 2, 7, 6, 3, 6. Not super strong, and you'll see why right now as we look at the minor. So if we look at the minor, we start off with scale degree 1 on the strongest beat first measure. Scale degree 2, sure, on the weak beat. And then we have scale degree flat 3. So again, we're imagining all these notes as if they are part of the E natural minor scale. Scale degree flat 3 on the strong beat. So we have the strongest is 1. Strong is flat 3. That's, that's really good so far. Then let's look at measure 2. We have scale degree 5. That's, that's one of our common notes. We have scale degree 1 and scale degree 5. These are all common, common notes for a minor key. And on top of that, scale degree 5 is on the strongest beat, and scale degree 1 is on a strong beat. Whereas when we thought about it from the minor perspective, we had, yes, scale degree 3 on the strongest beat, scale degree 6 on the strong beat, eh, it's not as, it's not as strong. Measure 3, Nothing doing for the minor. We have scale degree 4, scale degree 2. Here's where it really drives home is measure 4, we have 1, 5, 1. If we think about it for minor, we have E, B, E. We have tonic, dominant, tonic. As opposed to submediant, median, submediant in the major key. So having that 1, 5, 1 here, we can see that sure enough, lining up with our strongest and strong beats. We have scale degree 1 here on our strongest beat. We have flat three here on a strong beat. Even here in measure two, we have five, one, five. So can you see that the common notes for the minor key, first of all, there's more of them. And second of all, they're landing on strongest and strong beats in a way that if we imagine it from the major perspective, it really doesn't make as much sense. So this is a minor melody and it's a minor melody because we can see that the common notes of 1 flat 3 and 5 from the natural minor scale, in this case the E natural minor scale, are showing up. There's more of them and they're landing on stronger beats. Now let's look at a major melody. So in this melody you're going to see that there's a lot more common notes from the major scale and those common notes from the major scale are landing on strongest and strong beats much more than the notes from the natural minor scale. We're going to start by focusing on the minor. We're going to imagine this melody is a minor melody. And we're going to imagine this is in the key of the minor. So it starts off flat 3 to flat 3 in the first measure. Okay, not bad. Then we go to flat 6, flat 7, flat 3, measure 2. We tie over to measure 3. We have scale degree 2 in measure 3, and then we have three flats. We have flats, three, flat seven, flat three. Okay, the first warning bell here, guys, for a level one lead sheet for a simple song is there's no scale degree one. You really, really want to see a scale degree one somewhere in the first four measures. Again, this is not always going to be the case, but if you don't see a scale degree one anywhere, 
that's really, really odd. That's very odd for simple, basic songs. Simple, basic songs, you're always going to have a scale degree one. So right there, that's the first warning bell. There's no scale degree one when we imagine this melody to be minor. And on top of that, there's no scale degree five. The only common note we have is scale degree three. And yeah, it does show up on the strongest and strong beats in measure one and in measure four. But you're going to see that when we think about this from a major perspective, it makes a lot more sense. So from a major perspective, so we're now going to imagine this melody as if it's a major melody. So with the scale of G major. So G would be scale degree 1, F sharp scale degree 7, G scale degree 1. So 1, 7, 1, that is stronger than flat 3, 2, flat 3. Then we go 4, scale degree 5 to scale degree 1. That's much stronger than flat 6, flat 7, flat 3. As you can see from major melodies in our last couple measures, sometimes we can have scale degree 6 and scale degree 7. And sure enough, we can see scale degree 7 right here. And then in our last measure, we have 151. 151 is so much stronger than flat 3, flat 7, flat 3 in terms of determining the key. When we think about this melody from a natural minor scale perspective, and then from a major scale perspective, the major scale perspective is so much stronger. The, if we think about this as a major scale, it is so much stronger. There's more common notes, and those common notes are landing on stronger and strong beats. I will see you in the next lesson where we're going to talk about combining chords and melody to get an even clearer picture if the song or piece of music you're trying to understand is in a major or minor key. I'll see you there. In the last lesson, I made it very clear that simple and easy songs are usually going to have scale degree one in the first measures or the last measures, but here's the thing. You're not always going to be dealing with simple, easy songs. So the fact of the matter is a lot of the times you're actually not going to find scale degree one of the scale that's associated with either the major or the minor key of the piece of music that you are trying to figure out and understand. So in these cases, you will need to look at the chords and the other common notes in the melody together to try and figure out if the melody is showing the major or the minor of the two possible keys in the key signature. So let's unpack this example and take a closer look. So first, let's look at our key signature. In our key signature, we can see there's no sharps or flats, so it's either C major or A minor. Now the second thing to look at is the time signature, because now we know where our strong beats and our weak beats are going to be. So if we look at the first measure, we have two major common notes, which are 3 and 5. If we thought about this melody from a major perspective, if we thought about this melody as if it was in C major, and for the minor, we start on scale degree 5, and then we have 7. And we can see that in the second measure, sure enough, from a melody perspective, the major common notes we have are scale degree 3, and the minor common notes we have are scale degree 5. So, so far by measure 2, honestly, if I just saw the melody, I'd be leaning towards major. Now let's look at our next two measures. Oh, we have a lot of scale degree ones. If, if this was a major, we'd have a lot of scale degree ones here. So in these next two measures, we even have, again, imagine we're in the key of C major. We're imagining back and forth between the major and minor. Right here and right here, we have these scale degree ones. And here again, scale degree one. So you might think if you look at these first four measures, you don't look at the chords and you just look at the melody, you might very quickly and rightly think, correctly think, that we're in the key of C major. And sure enough, as we look at the next four measures, we see that time and time again we have this C note coming up which would make us think we even end on a C note. We're even ending on scale degree one. 
So from a melody perspective, it would actually make a lot of sense to say that we're in a major key, but here's where that idea falls apart. Look at the chords. Look at the chords. We start with an A minor. We end with an A minor. There isn't a single C chord in this entire eight measure piece of music. There are no C chords. So even though there are C notes, and even though the melody is not very strong in terms of pointing towards the minor, it still is going to be a minor melody with minor chords, and the key is actually going to be the key of A minor. So you have to look at the chords, and you have to look at the melody, and then look at both of them together. Because as you can see here, the melody is not clearly pointing to it being a minor key, but when you zoom out and you just look at the chords, you go, wait a second, there isn't even one C chord, this entire piece of music, but there's two A minor chords. So right there, that's telling you, remember, from the chords, if you start and end on one, and we think about the Roman numerals, A here, that's one. A minor at the beginning and end, those are both one, lowercase Roman numeral one, which means we are really in the key of A minor for this piece of music. So in summary, the example above is more likely a major melody just by looking at the scale degrees. However, when you look at the chords, you'll notice there are no C chords. So even though the melody is showing minor common notes on weak beats, we can tell the key is minor because of the chords. I will see you in the next lesson. In this lesson, we're going to do a summary and a review of the three steps to understand and know the key of a piece of written music. So to make the final decision on what key a piece of music is in, ask yourself the following questions and think about the information. Number one, key signature, major minor keys. There are four possible keys for level one lead sheets. That's going to be C major, G major, A minor, E minor. So ask yourself, what are the two possible keys that this song could be in? Look at the key signature, which is the major key, which is the minor key. They will always be relative major and minor. Which keys could you use? Is it going to be C major and A minor or G major and E minor? Then you're going to look at the chords and the chord progressions. Do the chords show a common chord progression? If they do, great. You have already a really solid idea that it's going to be major. If the chords do not show a common chord progression, ask yourself, do all the chords come from the harmonized scale that is the same name as the key? If there are chords from a harmonized G major scale, and you think the key is A minor, so if you see those D major and those B minor chords that come from the G major harmonized scale and you think the key is A minor, go back to step one because you might have got that key signature wrong. In more complex music, that is common, but for these easier level one lead sheets that we're going to do, you're never going to see that. So what are the first and last chords? Remember that example from the last lesson where we had the A minor as the first and last chord? That was really important to figure out the key of the piece of music. Ask yourself, which chords are used the most? Again, the last lesson that you just watched, there were two A minor chords, there were no C major chords, so to think of it as being in the key of C major was very unlikely because of that. Now there can be minor chords in a major key, and there can be major chords in a minor key. So if there are no minor chords in the song, the key is probably major. And if there are very, very few major chords in the song, the key is probably minor, but again, you need to go through and look on a case-by-case -case basis, one song at a time, to double-check yourself. So then ask yourself, are the chords showing a major or a minor key? Then, step number three, you look at the melody, common notes, and the strong beats. So ask yourself, are there major or minor common notes or scale degree one from one of the two possible keys on the strongest and strong beats in the first few measures? Now remember, this is not a make or break. This is not a 100% foolproof thing, but look for it first. Think of the scale degrees in terms of the major key. Which scale degrees fall in the strongest and strong beats of the first few and last few measures? Then think of the scale degrees in terms of the minor key. 
which scale or scale degrees fall on the strongest and strong beats of the first few and last few measures. Then ask yourself, are the melody and common notes showing a major key or a minor key? Lastly, take it all and put it all together. So if the chord progression is major and the common notes look to be major, most likely it's a major key. If the chord progression you can't tell if it's major or minor and the common notes are major, it's probably a major key. If the chord progression is minor, the common notes are minor, it's definitely a minor key. And if you can't tell from the chord progression but the common notes are minor, it's most likely a minor key. I will see you in the next lesson. In this lesson, you are going to understand how to write and analyze and show the key of a piece of music. So after you've gone through your three steps and you've figured out what key the piece of music is in, then you're going to write a little symbol below the staff to show the key of the piece of music. So what you're going to do is step number one, you're going to write the letter name of the key below the clef in the first measure of the music. Then you write the quality of the key. Nothing for major, a minus sign for minor, and then you write a colon. That's it. So, for example, in this example of the first couple measures of the incredibly popular song, A Baby Shark, the key is going to be G. So we start off by writing a G. Then we add the quality. In this case, no need to add anything because the quality is major. And then we add just a little colon, two dots, right next to it. Now here's an example of Scarborough Fair, which is a classic English song. And you can see that I've gone ahead and added A minor with a little colon there. And that's how we show the key of a piece of music. So if the key of a piece of music was C major, for example, then below the clef, you just write a C and a colon. If the key is G, it's going to be a G and a colon. If the key is A minor, just write an A minor and a colon. If the key is E minor, E minor, add the colon. That's it. That is how you are going to express and show the key of a piece of music. I will see you in the next lesson. In this lesson, you are going to understand how to perform a scale degree analysis of a piece of music. So a scale degree analysis is where you go through and you look at the melody and you understand which scale degrees are being used from the scale that's related to the key that the piece of the music is in. So what you're going to do is you're going to write SD for scale degree and then just like from the last lesson, you're going to show what key the piece of music is in, either C major, G major, A minor, or E minor. And that's going to look like this, scale degree, G major. Step number two is you're going to write scale degrees below the staff under each note that is an attack in the piece of music. So what I mean by that is you're not going to write a scale degree for the second note of a tie. You just write it for the first note of a tie. We can see that example right here that we have on one of the doot doo doos. This note on beat four is tied over to beat one but we're only writing the scale degree for the first note. Rule number three, if there is a note that is one half step lower than where it should be in the major scale, the scale degree gets a flat accidental. And rule number four, if there is a note that is one half step higher than it would be in the major scale, the scale degree gets a sharp accidental. For example, a sharp four. Add a flat accidental to scale degree flat 3, flat 6, and flat 7 if you're writing a scale degree analysis in a minor key. And if a flat 3, flat 6, or flat 7 is raised up by one half step from the natural minor scale, you're going to remove the flat accidental from the scale degree and leave it like it normally would be from the major scale. So let's take a look at some of these examples. Here's a scale degree in a major key. So you see we have S, D for scale degree. Then we have the little way we have of writing the key. That's the key of G major. And then we have the scale degree for each note. So D would be scale degree five. So sure enough, here's scale degree five right under the D. The E is scale degree six. Sure enough, there's scale degree six written underneath. 
And then there's a lot of Gs, so those are all scale degree one for the do 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 do. Let's take a look at a minor scale degree analysis. So here we see again scale degree, sure enough, it's right there. And then A minor for the key, because you can see up here, well, our key signature, there's no sharps or flats. And the first and last chord is an A, and also it's starting on an A. So this piece of music is definitely in A minor. Now you can see that, sure, are you, those are both on scale degree one, and then going to, and those are all on scale degree five. Then we go two, flat, three, two, one, and then we go five, seven, one, seven, five, six, four, five, and this six right here, this is where things get interesting because the key is A minor, but the note is F sharp, which does not belong in an A natural minor scale. So normally, this scale degree would be F natural. It would have a flat in front of it. But because we're raising that F up by one half step, we take the flat away and we add the sharp accidental. And from time to time, you will see notes that do not belong to the key in the melody. And whenever you see those, if you're in a major key, follow rules three and four. And if you are in a minor key, follow rules five and six. So in summary, with this change to scale degree six, where we're not gonna show the flat, in measure eight, there is a scale degree that is not from the A natural minor scale. Now do not let a non-scale or non-key note stop you from figuring out the key. If 95% of the notes are in the key of the key signature or from the scale that belongs to the key signature, you are good to go. There is no flat accidental in front of scale degree six because of rule six that when we raise a note up one half step from where it would normally be in the natural minor scale, if it already has a flat in front of it, like flat three, flat six, and flat seven for the scale degrees, we're gonna take that flat away. I will see you in the next lesson. In this lesson, you are going to learn how to write a Roman numeral analysis. It's also called a harmonic analysis because we're gonna analyze the harmony or the chords with Roman numerals. So step number one is to write the key and the colon again below where you did the scale degree. So we can see that up here we have scale degree, key of G, and then below that we're writing again just the key of G to show that everything that comes after this is talking about the key of G. Step number two is you're going to write one Roman numeral directly below each chord symbol. You see that? Directly below each chord symbol goes a Roman numeral. And you're going to write the Roman numerals for the key that you did that you think the song is in, which you just did for the scale degrees as well. Now, here's a couple of tips. The chord symbols should show how the chord relates to the key of the music. So for example, if we think about the key of G, the scale is G major. The Roman numeral is going to show the quality of the chord and the scale degree of the note name of that chord in relation to the scale. So G is 1, A is 2, B is 3, C is 4, D is 5, E is 6, like that. So in the key of G, G is 1. In the key of E minor, a G chord is 3. In the key of C, a G chord is 5. In the key of A minor, a G chord is 7. And you're always going to show the quality of the chord with the major chords being capitalized, the minor chords being lower case. So let's look at this example of Baby Shark with a harmonic analysis. We can see that we start on a D. D is scale degree 5, so the Roman numeral is going to be a 5. And then it's going to be a capital Roman numeral because the quality of the chord is major. And then we go to G, which is scale degree one. So the Roman numeral is going to be a one and it's going to be capital because the quality of the chord is major. Let's take a look at a minor example now for Scarborough Fair. So you can see we still have the scale degree analysis from last time, but we're not going to pay attention to that. We're going to look at the harmonic analysis. So you can see that the key is written here and sure enough, beneath each chord symbol, 
there is a Roman numeral. So A is 1, E is 5, A, B, C, D, E, and the quality is minor, so it's lowercase. G is 7, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and the quality is major, so it's capital. And then we are back to A minor, so we are back to 1. And then, remember here, this A minor still applies to this measure, even though there's no chord symbol in it. Chord symbols apply to all measures that come after them until we get a new chord symbol. We get a new chord symbol in measure 6. Sure enough, C, A, B, C is scale degree 3, so we're going to write a Roman numeral 3. We're going to write it capitalized because the quality of the chord is major. And then we're back to A minor, and then we go to E minor, and then we finish out on A minor. I will see you in the next lesson. In this lesson, I'm going to walk you through and talk you through a scale degree and harmonic analysis of Baby Shark. So Baby Shark is a traditional American campfire song, and we're going to check it out here. So we can see and go through just the scale degree analysis first. So first of all, we need to determine the key. Now the key is G major, but let's understand why the key is G major. So we can see from our key signature that we have one sharp. So the two possible key signatures we have are going to be G major and E minor. Now, how do we know that it's G major instead of E minor? Well, first of all, let's look at it. Okay, let's imagine our scale degrees from a major perspective. So from a major perspective, we start on scale degree five. We go five, six, one, 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 five, six, one, 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 five, six, one, 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 one. Uh, one, one, seven, five, six, one. Okay, so there are some scale degree sixes there, which if we think about it from a minor perspective would be seven, one, three, 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 seven, one, three, 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 seven, one, three, 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 two, seven, one, three. Okay, we can see that if we think about this melody from a major angle, yeah, sure, it makes sense. Five, six, one, 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 one. Also, from a common notes angle, for the minor, it also works as well. Flat seven, one, flat three, 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 three. That also works as well. But now let's look at the chords. Okay. So we start on D, then we go to G, and we stay on G for four measures. Then we do C for four measures, then we go to E minor for four measures, then D for two measures, and then we're back to G. Now this is actually a one, four, six, five chord progression. Think about it. G is one, C is four, E minor is six, D is five. This is a common chord progression, and this is actually going to be major. Now here's another way we know that's major really where the song starts. This part right here, this is like a ready, set, go. This is not quite starting the song yet, but right here, where it really starts, we have a G chord, and it ends on, sure enough, a G chord. It also ends on scale degree one, if we were thinking about it from a major melody perspective. So based on that, we're gonna say, yeah, this song is in the key of G major, no way is this song in the key of E minor. And from there, you can take a look, and I recommend you take some time with your book to look over the scale degree analysis, and then also look at the harmonic analysis because the Roman numerals are below each individual chord symbol. Oh, but it's not over yet. Click here to watch the next video lesson or up here for the full video playlist.